Okay. Hello, everyone. I am Ushma Guradia. I am a sensory motor therapist. Uh, I have a private practice in Bangalore. And hopefully, you have come across my previous videos on this YouTube channel. Today, I have a special guest, uh, Priyanka Sanat Kumar, who is a speech therapist. She is special because uh, she has worked with me in my clinic as a consultant speech therapist for a very long time. And she's also a very good friend. And I know her work. I know her very well, how she thinks, how she works, and uh, how passionate she is about speech. So uh, today I'm going to ask Priyanka a few questions. Uh, and she's going to answer us. And uh, this is going to be quite short and sweet. So hold on and please pay attention, listen to our question and answers. So, hi Priyanka. Hi ma'am. Thanks for the nice introduction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, welcome. So, as a speech therapist, I wanted to ask you, how do you define communication and how does communication start right from the newborn stage? Yeah. So, communication includes two people. One who uh, sends the message and other is the recipient of the message. That's what is the communication. So the communication starts right from the birth. That is cry, birth cry, whatever cry. The, the, the child cries, you know, okay, mother knows. Now the baby is hungry. And even in that cry, there are differential cries. The pain cry, the hunger cries are different. So then if you come, uh, the language development, if you see, then as the uh, progress is around three months, the child starts cooing, Ooh, the pleasant sounds the child starts making. And the child starts looking at the person who is talking to the child. You know, the child will start tracking the person who is, you know, uh, listening to the voice. Then around six months, the child starts babbling. Ba, 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 ma, 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 different sounds, you know, then uh, variegated babbling, different sound combination starts, then goes to the first word stage. Then before that, the child will start pointing to the things. That's also a form of communication in terms of, uh, you know, how the child communicates. The child wants something it will show around, you know, okay, then mother will get that and uh, <clears throat> give it to the child. So this is what a communication is. It will always have a two person. The other person will say, uh, one person will send the message, the other will receive the message and understand what the other person is trying to tell. That's basically is the communication. <clears throat> Great. Very good. Very good. So what I understand here is basically a child looks more at a person rather yes. than objects. Of course, yes. objects, toys are very important. Yes. But um, a child looks more at a person, whoever, obviously the mother, very important, father or grandparents or any caregivers. Yes. But um, like in physiotherapy, in early intervention, we say, all a child needs, all or a all a baby needs is the mother's face to yes. interact and to communicate, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So basically, the caregiver's face and caregiver's sound and voice, yes, are very important. Important, right? Because see, uh, the voice is always one thing is soothing for the child, mm -hmm. uh, familiarity. If you know, if the third person comes and talks, the child may not be interested because the child doesn't know who the person is. The recognition, recognition of the face, I'm telling. So any family members who is spending a lot of time with the child, obviously the child will start responding to that person. Yes, but the child responds more to the mother and mother, yes. the parents because Parent. the child has spent 40 weeks. That's true. 40 weeks inside the mother's womb yeah, yeah. and they are familiar with the mother's, mother's voice before birth itself. Before birth itself, exactly. So the care, the mother's voice and mother's face are yes. very important, yes. right? Yes. Um, also, the intonation of the mother's voices. Can you can you tell us a little bit yeah. about the tones intonation of the mother's is, voice? Yes. Right yes. from the baby stage. I'm not. We are not still at the later stage, right from the baby stage. Yes, right, right from the birth only we start talking to the child, looking at the child. Hi, how are you? This is my baby. You know, the soothing voice. We don't shout at the child. You know, it's more of a singer song like, you know, we don't uh, uh, directly talk like an adult. Oh, how are you? No, we, you know, the tone is itself is different when you even to the baby, uh, uh, babies as they grow. So we still use the same tone. The baby talk. Do you want mom, mom? And all those things. We sing a lot of rhymes or lullabies, you know, or whatever it is. The one thing is to get the attention of the child for those intonations. Because mm -hmm. you can attract the child's attention to it. 
you know, the attention of the child to the speech I'm talking about. So that's also very important. We don't talk like a robot. Even in normal day-to-day -day conversation, we use a lot of intonation, like questioning, you know, mm -hmm. exclamation, anything. We use different intonation. Nobody talks like a robot. So body language, intonation is, and facial expressions are very important for the communication. As from right from the newborn stage, yes. the baby stage, right? Yes, yes. So, and um, also one more point is that, yes, so the child starts tracking. The child starts looking at the mother as she moves across the room or yes. around the room. This is common to uh, all of us who deal with children. We all commonly know, uh, you know, physiotherapists, occupational therapists and speech therapists that, you know, yes. visual tracking is right. very important. So in India, culturally, we have those hanging toys, colorful toys, and obviously all around the world also we do. But we have those toys, but I think more important than the toys also, the mother, the availability of the mother is also very crucial. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. Isn't yes. It? yes. So Eye that, contact. Uh, That's a very important part of communication, actually. Anytime, anywhere, even when we talk to others, we don't look like this. We look at the, look at the person's look at the person, uh, yes. eyes that we are uh, paying attention to your speech. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And uh, when does, uh, approximately, when does a child start pointing uh, around nine to ten months, uh, approximately at that point of time, mm -hmm. the child will start pointing or at least mm -hmm. putting the hands, hands, not exactly pointing. Pointing, but yeah. putting then the it hands. will become in the fine tuned and uh, goes to the pointing by one year. Yes. yes, but the child will start uh, showing towards the object, which is object or food, whatever it is. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, raising the hands. Yes. Uh, and consistently pointing to the same object, not yes. randomly moving hand here and there. You know, the, if the child knows, okay, the child wants banana and showing to the banana, it will be the banana only, not somewhere else. So consistent pointing and consistent about. pointing. So yes. I, the way I understand as a professional is by 12 months of pointing is not there at all. Pointing or some sort of, uh, you know, uh, showing. Uh, then a parent should be concerned. That is what yes. my take is on, you yes, know, as that's a... True. Uh, professional because working see one more thing the child still have not developed speech completely or is still starting to speak mm -hmm. right so the child mm -hmm. will not have okay ah, mama this is much easier for the child so parents should watch for pointing it's very important very important very right. important milestone actually Ex yes very important i say that you know uh, i i contact is the first form of speech. I yes. mean, that's what I tell parents. And then pointing is the next, not necessarily in stages, but, uh, you know, you have to look for these um, uh, components, you know. When yeah, there are the prerequisites for speech and language development. We say joint attention, pointing, eye contact. These are, are very important. They are the prerequisites for the development. of. <laughs> very good. Very good. So just two or three sentences about joint attention. Can you please explain? Yeah, joint attention is like, okay, now uh, when somebody is, uh, okay, if the two siblings are playing, one is the older one, one is the younger one, the older one is playing something and the younger one comes and joins to the play and starts playing with the child. I mm -hmm. can give the simple example. This is joint yes. attention. Yes. So yes. this is what a joint attention is, where you come and pay attention with the other person's activity or for kids it is always a play actually That's yes right. yes yes right. it is in the form of play right. and joint attention with the mother also starts really? very early, early in life as a newborn because the the baby is looking at the mother's face and then looking as to where is the mother looking mother yes so nowadays we have this very big issue in the world that the mother herself is looking at the screen so obviously the baby is interested in what is my mother looking at yes that's true okay that's true. Hmm. all right okay so now tell us a little bit about functional communication and why i want to ask you this as a speech hmm. therapist i want to hear from you is because uh in the past few years and more so recently after the covid time period uh, i'm finding that parents feel that knowing rhymes, knowing letters, knowing numbers, that means my child will talk. But actually, it is difficult for parents to realize that just because a child knows 10 rhymes or knows the alphabet A to Z or can count 1 to 10 does not necessarily mean yeah. that they have no speech issues. 
Yes. So please highlight a little bit about this. What is yes. functional communication and what is not? Not. Okay. So the functional communications by which the individual or the child spontaneously and independently communicates his or her wants or needs and socialize with others, uh, mm -hmm. whatever his needs are. It's basically, mm -hmm. the child should be able to tell what he wants. Mm -hmm. It can be request, it can be rejection, it can be, you know, uh, telling something, uh, describing things, it can be as simple as that. Mm -hmm. So functional is ability to tell what he wants and what he doesn't want. That is yes. that. Yes. So coming to the uh, question about uh, knowing rhymes and mm -hmm. knowing colors, mm -hmm. <laughs> that will not serve the purpose. Knowing yes. rhymes, you cannot consider it as a communication. Mm -hmm. By singing rhyme, child will not get what he wants. Or by color, knowing colors, the child if the child is not able to tell he is hungry, knowing color blue is doesn't make sense. Doesn't make even sense. if he knows the thing, does he really know that blue means what is the blue? Does he able to recognize? Correct. Does he able to differentiate? Does he able to point? All these things comes there. But mm -hmm. what is the core vocabulary of the child? Basic mm -hmm. vocabulary. Does he know what pain is? Mm -hmm. Requesting, I mm -hmm. want. Those are functional words we say. It depends on the varied situation. If he's mm -hmm. in the bathroom, the functional word may be susu, potty, mm -hmm. brush, mm -hmm. wash, all those things. Mm -hmm. If in the mm -hmm. if he's in the kitchen, what what uh, what, what the child, what do you expect the child to tell? Okay, hungry, mm -hmm. glass, drinking, mm -hmm. you know all those things. So mm -hmm. you should know the core vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Knowing rhymes, singing rhymes. I don't think so. it will serve the purpose of communication because it's just a singing. You know, mm -hmm. rote learning, we say, or a parrot learning. Yes, I rote think, learning. Yes. It is not It is not speech and language. No, no. Not only it is not communication, but it is not speech and language. Language. Mm -hmm. Especially when the parent complains that my child is not able to speak, but mm -hmm. can sing rhymes, can tell colors, can tell numbers. It's definitely no communication in that. It's just a right child might have seen through so many times in the iPad or the so rote learning. It is rote rote learning. learning. So yes, that's yes. the thing. Yes. So uh, just tell me a little bit about communication. You already said it is basically some connection between two people. Yeah. Speech is, you know, I guess in your <laughs> technicality, what is speech and what is language? Can you just highlight that? A yeah. Bit? See, the language <clears throat> we divide into three parts now. Hmm. Uh, uh, syntax, semantics, and pragmatics. Mm -hmm. So semantics comes the vocabulary. So mm -hmm. First, when the child comes to us, we start teaching the vocabulary. Child should have something, nouns, mm -hmm. you know, or names of the things. It can be different categories of basic uh, items in the house, household, mm -hmm. of fruits, vegetables, mm -hmm. you know, whatever the child uses for day-to-day -day items. Mm -hmm. then, real items, real, real items, items in the world, items, not from yes. pictures. Not from pictures or flashlights. I don't encourage that. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Uh, I mean, mm. certain people use it, but I don't think so. You know, mm. generalization will become a problem. Yes. The child should be able to understand, okay, the picture I'm seeing apple and outside apple should be seen. Same. The problem with the picture is the child will be seeing apple, apple. When the real apple is given, the child cannot identify that. Exactly. So I, I would encourage the parents to start things right from home, whatever is there. You don't need fancy yes. uh, uh, cards or fancy things to show. Show them whatever you have at home. Oh. And, you know, that will be easy for the generalization. Oh. Then comes the syntax, the grammar part, mm -hmm. because when the child mm -hmm. has certain amount of vocabulary, now I need to start, increase the length of utterance. Now the child might say banana to eat. Next, mm -hmm. I want banana, mm -hmm. want banana. So mm -hmm. the verbs come, so grammatical markers come. So the two words to... put together, two words yes. put together. So yes. start increasing the length mm -hmm. of utterances based mm -hmm. on the, depending on the level of the child where he is. If he's mm -hmm. in a two, two word phrase, then we'll increase to three word phrase. Mm -hmm. So that is one. Next is the pragmatics. Pragmatics is in the social situation. Mm -hmm. How do I use it? Now, mm -hmm. whatever I've learned, it, am I able to use it outside? Not only with my parents. Now, if I go to a party, will I be able to communicate there, mama? Or with uncle and auntie, there's some third person there asking, mm -hmm. okay, uh, I want fruit or I want mm -hmm. cake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Requesting there, mm -hmm. you know, turn taking, where somebody speaking, the child should wait and uh, till that person finishes talking and then he comes. That's all mm -hmm. higher level, but I'm taking, you know, syntax, semantics and pragmatics, we say that's how the language comes. Later comes the speech. 
speech is mm. whatever the sound speech sounds development like uh, bilabials like pa ba ma then comes mm. all the later sound the 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 all those things you put together to form a word right mm-hmm. so if i want to put it in a simple word i would and first thing work on the comprehension part the language part mm-hmm. then expression the speech part mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so the comprehension plays a major role here you need to work on understanding of the child then only we'll start speaking same like how we learn the foreign language if i want to learn the tamil or mm. some other language i should know the basic vocabulary first i should understand what it is then i will slowly start using it in my uh, day to day life same mm-hmm. way it is you know uh, for the kid also so comprehension plays a very important role here so you need to work on increasing the comprehension of the child understanding of the child then only the child automatically will start speaking you don't have to put an extra effort you know child will start using it yeah, and then slowly you can increase the length of utterances if it is a speech mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there are other ways also form of communication you know sign language picture boards you know app based communication it depends on the level of the child where the child comes you know mm-hmm. which level of communication he is mm-hmm. 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 is using only a, a speech or still is inadequate then i need to move on to other parts of the other forms of communication mm mm-hmm. mm mm-hmm. mm-hmm. okay very good very good so what i understand from all this is and that is my uh, opinion also that you don't need to you don't need you know uh, use of fancy items like flash cards and things like that all the time i'm not saying yes. you absolutely don't need but you don't need to start from there you need to start from your daily items yes. that you have around in your house true isn't it hmm? yes hmm? see in a structured uh, see usually most of the therapy setups are structured you yes. know we plan a, a, a today session and i cannot get everything from home so i will use certain amount of flash cards or yes. uh, things yes. but yes. it is a parent's job to go back and you know to similar things with the real objects that will make sense to the child in the real world in yes. the real world. in the real world yes 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 so um, i had an example and you know many times i've come across these situations that uh, your parents are teaching from the mobile or the ipad screen you know this is tiger and this is lion okay animals obviously we can't have real animals but then we can have um, animal toys you know the small yes. size toys 3d toys that we have and many times as i said i've come across a situation where the child is uh, the parent is very eager to show the child on the mobile screen and i'm like no no wait a minute this happens in my clinic i give them the the animals toys and then the child is fascinated with seeing the tiger or the cheetah or in 3d you know it's a plastic toy or a rubber toy but the child is fascinated with the touch and the yes. color in seeing it in real and then as the child goes older a little bit i encourage the parents to take him to the zoo mm-hmm. take him or her to a zoo and you know connect that that okay this is a big tiger or a big lion see that is the thing no ma'am uh, when you see real that's what i was mentioning hmm. they can associate yes they can relate yes. when you show it in the mobile it can you cannot relate it you and manipulation relate. now when you give the real toy he has a thing to manipulate experiment yes. yes whatever it is you know the child is breaking the toy or not you know it's a different issue it doesn't but matter he, he yes he uses his own the sensory need of the yes. child is sensory taken care of. so in the clinic i give animals because you know i i don't put real fruits and vegetables there as you said it's a clinical setup yeah. but i do i do value the learning of the child when the child holds an apple and turns it around in their palms and tries to bite it or smell it you know those all the sensory input you know the color of the apple is red or slightly yeah. lighter red a uh, child um, uh, holds a banana and maybe they may mush it the first time or destroy the banana but that's okay for me um, that is all right to do it you know uh, the child yeah. can make a mess because they're getting a lot of sensory, sensory. input from there and then eat the banana rather than looking at it on a screen and learning oh this is banana this is apple you know parent can teach a lot of words at that time yes. peel peel yes. peel, peel. Eat, yes. eat 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 squish bite, squish bite, squish bite bite it yes. need not be a big lengthy big sentences length, yeah. is it but nice four to five sweet? functional words you have taught yes. there yes cut apple cut. you know bite apple you know if mother is cutting in the knife cut mm-hmm. apple you know 
simple mm-hmm. phrases or simple, simple words phrases. you can exactly. use it exactly exactly so part of my third question my to be third question already we have discussed but i will still go ahead and ask you <laughs> just tell us about how a parent can connect with a child mm-hmm. while communicating with them in yes, daily one, life in daily routines yes one thing through play also they can connect in daily and routine very young child very young child i am talking right from a baby like newborn 3 months 6 months right from there just keep up child with you whatever activity you are doing talk about it mm-hmm. you know okay i am for example i know zero to 3 months usually the baby will be sleeping most of the time yes. but the real uh, time comes when the child starts crawling you know all those things you can just come and sit with the child and show the things you know oh you are giving now by 6 7 months the child will start having banana right yes. you are making the child sit and you know peel peel sing rhymes that time you know ah. singing rhymes is more engaging you know that intonation and melody the child will get attracted yeah. to you and when the child is really hungry he will look at your face no so you don't have to actually have a formal or a proper rhyme if you're peeling a banana you can just make it a sing song your own uh, let's right. peel banana na uh, let's yeah. open banana you know you like just that, have to right? you don't have to be a good singer also yeah. for i've that. seen you i've seen you do this in the clinic so <laughs> you make your own rhyme just to get the child's attention yeah. and you know yeah. the, uh, and keep everything in your eye level so that the child looks at your face also it can imitate yes. your sounds the oral face. movements you know Nom, 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 you know so the, the child learns a lot by the mother's yeah. or the parents yes, facial expression yes mouth lip and jaw movements yes and you know way. if something if you're giving a semi solid kind of a thing like a porridge if it is there like like ah, tang yes. moments oh that's very good yes you, you know or a motor things are so very important moments if the child yes. has a weak tongue or a weak lip the drooling is there you will know all those things right so mm-hmm. it will affect the speech development later the child may mm-hmm. not be able to say the sounds properly or the pressure consonants what we say the, you know if the child wants to say pa mm-hmm. you know pa for the lip closure is not proper you know mm-hmm. all those things i am just talking about the uh, neuro i mean typical kids i'm talking as of now you know yes, when yes. Say, we are talking about neurotypical kids yeah, neurotypical yeah. typical development right now so you yeah. can teach a lot of oral movements also mm-hmm. mm-hmm. yummy mm-hmm. now we make all these sounds you know yes yes mm. yum you know all those you know it will indicate the child oh it must be tasty also mm, tasty tasty lick lick you know all those things if you're giving a orange you know half cut orange uh, uh. lick lick you know child you know if the child is not able to chew properly lick lick and then you can say chew nom 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 you know all those things we do in the day to day basis i think yes. even grand yes. mothers you know do it you know yeah. uh, all those yeah. things so yeah. you don't mechanically is, feed a child you don't mechanically yeah. shove food into the child's mouth yes, yes yes you are responsible as an adult you are responsible uh, for taking care of your child's nutrition uh, you know which will lead to growth yes. and development however you just cannot mechanically shove the food no and child will not mouth. eat also you yes. if you want the child if the, if you are engaged with the child the child will mm-hmm. eat more also you know mm-hmm. yes. all those things you yes. you can give extra two spoons the child might enjoy it and eat more and master yes. hmm, 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 hmm. this is my mm-hmm. daughter is to do if you want more she will hmm, hmm, hmm. then she yes. wants more oh you want more more and then you more. give more you like it yeah you like yes. it yum 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 uh-huh. all these things so the child communicates ma'am we should understand their Uh, uh indication what they are trying to that for that we have to be engaged with the child yeah, to, to understand the child yes 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 exactly exactly so thank you very much priyanka for uh, you know answering these questions and <laughs> hopefully you, they will be helpful to many new parents out there yes. and i just want to make a uh you know a point here clarify a point that when both of us said that we are talking about neurotypical development actually every baby should connect or every parent should connect with a baby like what we have spoken about here today yes um you know we are not going to divide you know whether a child is neurotypical or a child has autism or no autism because that is a whole different thing yeah. uh, or, you know which we may come to know later on or if you have a professional in your family you, you may detect very earlier but the point of this video that i'm trying to make as a child development till professional and a pediatric physical therapist is that how early connection with your child 
is so crucial and a live face not a screen or a tv a live face yes secondly i want all parents to know that we are talking you know speech means whatever priyanka said about communication speech language everything ultimately comes to the mouth or the oral motor area you also have to keep in mind that eating is also oral motor area so yes. speech and feeding go together yes go together and it's not only about the oral motor or the mouth it's also the neck and the trunk about which in some other video we may talk or you know parents may want to talk to your own therapist as to how the trunk is very important uh, in getting the function of the oral motor area for speech and feeding you know i want to tell one more thing the more yes. time you spend with the child your child you will know what child wants what doesn't want you know you will not be uh, in a confused state what is happening to my child you know mm -hmm. uh, you can anything it can be through play during play time or you know during feeding time or a bath time what he doesn't like what he likes this is very important yes. in case in future okay if you feel if you find out that my child has a problem it will be easy for a therapist to understand that okay this child wants this this child doesn't want this as mm -hmm. a parent you can tell this this is a much more information we can get mm -hmm. rather than we finding out you know what the child doesn't like what child yes. likes you know in parent terms of therapy, can provide that information lot of information observation skills are yes. also very important for the so, parents so parents have to learn how to decode your child that is child, part yes. of parenting for every irrespective parent. of the child irrespective of what the child uh, mm -hmm. has issues or does not have mm -hmm. issues or falls on a neurotypical range or whatever every parent needs to learn how to decode your child this is what i find myself telling parents all the time and emotional connection also is very uh, important emotional connection is also very important and that emotional connection also you build through food at you know during feeding time during bath time and every and in all of these feeding bath etc the two important components are it has to, there has to be a connection through play play mm. and fun yes play and fun and That's then right. it moves to real function in the world yes that's what functional yes. communication ultimately comes yes. to yes you know the how yes. connection play everything you know whatever we have discussed till now yes so uh, parents should understand that just by knowing rhymes numbers and alphabets doesn't serve the purpose the child exactly. has to communicate effectively exactly. the other exactly. person should understand what he is trying to tell and ultimately should not lead to frustration yes exactly exactly yeah, so thank you very much priyanka welcome and hopefully so we will much. meet again in some other yeah. videos sure thank you so much thanks ma